This year, a grand Technicolor film about showbiz is a favorite for Best Picture at the Oscars. Yes, it was well regarded amongst critics and audiences around the country, but is La La Land hands down the best film of the year? I can't even tell you. Is it good enough to beat out films like Moonlight that are widely considered more daring and unique? History says yes, because the Oscar voting process favors mediocrity. Back in 2009, the Academy switched from a straight popular vote to instant runoff voting, or preferential voting. The Academy wanted to better ensure that the film with the broadest support won. But the other side of that coin is that bold, polarizing films get pushed to the side. At its most basic level, instant runoff voting involves ranking a number of choices rather than choosing just one. Then, the choice with the fewest votes is removed, and then those votes for that candidate have their votes counted according to their second favorite candidate. Then the candidate that has the fewest votes is removed, and so on. It goes all the way until a candidate has 50% plus one of the vote. This applies to both the nominations process, although that does get a little weedy, and the process of selecting a Best Picture winner. So, how would instant runoff voting ultimately play out in a real-life scenario? Let's look at 2011, where The King's Speech beat out 127 Hours, The Fighter, Black Swan, Winter's Bone, True Grit, Inception, Toy Story 3, The Social Network, and The Kids Are Alright. All these films were probably first place picks on a lot of ballots, and dead last on others. It's very possible that the passionate fan bases of each of these films all had the King's Speech rank second or third. When their first place vote wasn't enough to stay in the game, their second place votes were counted and re-added to the mix, ultimately allowing the King's Speech to come from behind. Because the King's Speech had the broadest support rather than the most passionate support, it took home the prize. Wow, what an incredible, incredible honor. The new voting system seems to favor a certain type of film. We've had instant runoff voting at the Oscars for six years, uh, and fully half of those years have been won by movies about the movies. And I would count the King's Speech as being sort of adjacent to that. The King's Speech is about getting training and speech and elocution and all things that actors have to go through. Think Birdman, Argo the Artist. The Academy is made up of 6,687 film industry professionals who probably enjoy movies about themselves. They might not rank a film about showbiz as number one, but many might place it second or third, which is precisely where it's most dangerous. In 2005, before instant runoff voting was instituted, Crash won Best Picture. And the Oscar goes to... Crash! It's a film people either despise or love. I think we really want those movies that inspire extreme reactions one way or the other. Sometimes the movie wins that you hate, but sometimes the movie wins that you love. And I'd rather see that than a movie that everybody was just kind of okay with. In fact, Crash beat out a film that might have easily won in today's instant runoff system, a period film about entertainment, directed by Hollywood royalty, George Clooney. Good night and good luck.